everyone. Today I'm going to be continuing the reading of American Girls Girl of the Year 2019's book by Jennifer Castle. Chapter 5. Best Idea Ever. Stop! Ah! That tickles! I'd barely stepped into the pen when Penelope and Dash came at me, tails wagging and heads nudging the bottles in my hands. I didn't think I could feed both of them at once, so I stuck Dash's bottle behind me in the waist of my shorts. I squeezed a few drops of lamb milk replacer from Penelope's bottle onto my palm to make sure it wasn't too hot, like Freddie had shown me the day before. Penelope was not exactly patient. She kept jumping up and putting her front hooves on my stomach. Okay, 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 I said, giving Penny her bottle. She started suckling at it so hard that she almost pulled it out of my hand. Her ears wiggled as she drank, which was crazy adorable. It seemed pretty easy until I felt something yank at the back of my pants. I looked behind me to see Dash grabbing at the bottle in my waistband. I spun around so Dash couldn't get it, but since Penny refused to let go of her bottle, she spun around with me and crashed into Dash. Then Dash's bottle fell out of my waistband onto the ground. I reached for it. So did Dash. I got to it before he did, but Penny's suckling knocked me off balance. The next thing I knew, I was lying in the dirt, covered in hay, holding two bottles for the animals hovering over me. Is that the way you're supposed to do it? asked Beckett, who was suddenly standing in the pen, holding a fitness ball. Probably not, I said. Would you help me? Can I? Beckett dropped the fitness ball, plopped down in the hay, and took Dash's bottle. He giggled as the goat stayed glued to the bottle. Beckett had been thrilled yesterday when Grandpa and I introduced him to the animals. Mom and Dad were a little less enthused, but they came around. What's the ball for? I asked Beckett as Dash finished his bottle. Grandpa said I should try this. Beckett rolled the ball across the pen, and Dash chased it down, then tried to jump on top of it. He balanced there for two seconds, then tumbled off. Beckett cracked up. He rolled the ball again, and Dash did the same balancing trick. That's so cute, I said. Maybe you can teach him to do another trick. You two could perform at the country fair in August. Great idea, Beckett said as I headed over to the chicken coop. Beckett was saying, come on, Dash, let's try again. I had to laugh. I wasn't serious, but if Beckett wanted to try to train a goat, he should go for it. Hello, ladies, I said as I opened the gate to the chicken coop. I'm guessing you've noticed your new neighbors by now. The chickens answered me in their low-pitched, repeating cluck, 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 known as a contentment call. It meant they were happy to see me, and the feeling was totally mutual. I scattered chicken feed and watched the birds peck at the dirt. Then I picked up my favorite, a super soft, white, silky chicken I'd named Dandelion, because her fluffy head looked like a dandelion puff that grew along the fence by the vegetable fields. She started clucking. What's new? I held her up to my ear and turned my head so I could listen to what she was saying. Over in the pen, Beckett was still playing ball with Dash. Yeah, Beckett's pretty happy about the new animals. You know who else is? Dandy cocked her head, giving me her full attention. She's a great listener. That's right, I answered, walking to the other side of the coop. Grandpa, he's really glad the animals are here. Maybe they'll take his mind off the barn. But if they don't, I continued, then whatever that first barn event is, whenever it is, I'm going to make sure it's the best barn event ever, so Grandpa won't possibly want to leave. Think I can do it, Dandy? She moved her head up and down like she was nodding. Chickens, the ultimate confidence boosters. As I put Dandy down, a voice from outside the coop said, Should I call you Old MacDonald now that you have so many farm animals? It was Katerina Minardi, our farm manager. She's the coolest grown-up I know. Did you meet Penelope and Dash? I asked, coming out of the coop, closing the gate tightly behind me. Beckett made the introductions, she said, giving me a hug. 
Kat is 28, but she seems more like a teenager to me. She wears ripped jeans, work boots with rainbow striped laces, and funky t-shirts. Today's tea had a picture of a princess climbing down a stone tower with the words, I will rescue myself, thanks, underneath. Kat pulled straw out of my hair as I told her about my first attempt to feed two hungry baby animals. Chickens are definitely easier, I said. How did things go in Kingston yesterday? Kat takes produce from Pleasant View Farm to sell at the big farmer's market every week. We sold everything I brought. How was Thea's party? Uh, Thea's party. I changed the subject. Time for our Saturday morning field date. I offered my hand up for a high five. You know it, Sprout, Kat said as she slapped my palm. It's my favorite time of the week. Sprout is her nickname for me because that's what her father called her when she was growing up on her own family's farm. And because she says it makes her happy to be reminded of another generation of farmers. Kat's parents both passed away years ago, and Lorenzo, her only sibling, is in the Marines and lives 2,000 miles away on a military base in Arizona. We're like a substitute family for Kat, and I'll take her as my big sister any day. We headed to the vegetable fields, where we grow food in bigger quantities than the kitchen gardens. I waved at some of the farm crew working another field. Squash seeds! Kat said when we got to the patch of tilled soil. She showed me how deep to plant the seeds. As we worked, I thought of how the tiny seeds would grow into bright gold butternut squash. I pictured myself working with mom in the kitchen, peeling the squash, chopping it, and roasting it with olive oil and cinnamon. Yum! We worked for a while until we heard the sound of bike tires on the gravel path bordering the field. Looks like my lunch has arrived, Kat said with a smile. Her boyfriend, Gabe, popped a wheelie before sliding to a stop beside us. Show off, Kat teased, then gave him a quick kiss hello. Can't help it, Gabe said. Gotta impress my two favorite girls. He hopped off his bike and pulled a brown paper sack out of one of his saddlebags. I recognized the logo on it. It was from the deli next to the bike shop where Gabe worked. Turkey sub on wheat for cat. Out of the other saddlebag, he pulled two packages of snacks. I got these for you, Blair. Take your pick. I looked at the choices. Potato chips and white cheddar popcorn. It was sweet of him to bring me something, but seriously? I'm not even safe from dairy out here in a vegetable field. Thanks, I said. I'll take the chips. If Kat is my pretend big sister, Gabe is like a big brother, and he's always super thoughtful. In the two years he and Kat have been dating, he's brought picnic lunches to her once a week, even in the winter. Kat says he's the best boyfriend ever. I'll go wash my hands, Kat said, heading toward the greenhouse on the other side of the field. Meet you at the gazebo? See you there, Gabe said. I couldn't help but smile. The gazebo is their special picnic spot. Dad had built the gazebo right on the edge of the creek with two bench seats inside. Have a good lunch, I said to Gabe, and thanks again for the... Blair? Gabe interrupted me in a shaky whisper. I, I need your help. My help? What's the matter? I asked. Just... Gabe glanced towards Cat, who was still walking towards the greenhouse. Just, come on, I'll tell you on the way. Okay, I said, but you're kind of freaking me out. We walked in silence down the dirt path and under the archway at the entrance to the orchard. Once we reached the trees, Gabe stopped and turned to me. So the thing is, he began. He paused dramatically. Then his serious expression opened into a huge grin. I want to ask Kat to marry me. What? Oh, Gabe, she'll be so happy. I jumped up and down. More straw fell out of my hair. I hope you're right, he said. We've never even talked about marriage, so honestly, I'm not sure what she'll think. You know how Kat likes her independence? 
But she loves you, I reminded him. How could she say no? That would be so mean. Well, Kat always says what she feels, and I love that about her. If she's not ready to get married, she'll turn me down. But I'm ready, so I have to ask. Oh, I hope, 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 hope she says yes. I gave him a big hug. I'm glad we have your blessing, he said when I finally let go. But here's the thing. Kat's one of a kind, so I want her proposal to be one of a kind too. That's where you come in. Me? Will you be my proposal assistant? Gabe asked. Proposal assistant? I had no idea what that was, but that didn't stop me from wanting to do it. I will, I said. What are your ideas so far? I definitely want it to happen here at the farm, and there should be some surprises, Gabe said. I need a hand making the whole thing as special as Kat is. You're talking to the right assistant, I said. Idea sparks were already bursting in my brain. We'll need decorations and food, I said as we started walking towards the creek. Wait, I might need some help. Can I tell my mom and Thea? Okay, but don't let Kat find out. You got it, I said, flashing him a thumbs up. Then I skipped back through the rows of apple trees towards the house. Hey, Mom, I said as I rushed through the kitchen door. I have news. You're going to flip. In a good way, I hope, she said. She was standing at the stove, stirring something in a big pot. Gabe's planning to propose to Kat, I whispered. And he asked me to help him. Plop. Mom had clapped her hands together, which made her drop the spoon into the pot. That's wonderful news. Do you think Kat will say yes? I asked, leaning against the counter. Well, marriage is a big deal, Mom said. She may want to think it over, but Gabe seems like a terrific guy, and they look so happy together. If I make this proposal super awesome, she won't have any choice but to say yes. Mom laughed. That sounds like a Blair strategy. Just let me know if you need a hand. You'll make creme brulee, right? It's Kat's favorite. My creme brulee is Kat's favorite, but I haven't cooked anything with dairy in it since being diagnosed as lactose intolerant. I'm not sure I could do it, even for Kat. You may need to make this batch, I told Mom. I'll be pretty busy with decorations. Then I changed the subject. What's that? I gestured to the pot on the stove. Red pepper sauce? Yep, I'm experimenting with something new for the menu. Don't you think this would be terrific on zucchini noodles? Wait, what did I do with my spoon? I pointed to the pot and tried not to laugh. Oh my goodness, she said, fishing out the spoon and wiping the handle. What would I do without my official test taster? Want to give your opinion? Mom scooped up some of the sauce with the spoon and held it out. The sauce looked as delicious as it smelled, rich and creamy. Creamy? I stepped back. Mom, if that has cream in it, I can't... This is why I can't cook right now, I thought. A chef has to taste what she makes. Oh, Blair, said Mom, her face falling. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. I'm still getting used to this whole thing, just like you. Beckett appeared behind Mom. He must have come in through the family kitchen. Hey, if Blair can't be your taste tester anymore, can I do it? He asked. My mouth fell open, but no words came out. Beckett? A test taster? The kid eats dirt. But that wasn't what made tears sting my eyes. I left the kitchen and ran up three flights of stairs to my room, wondering what kind of a cook I was now. So that is the end of chapter five. Another kind of sad ending to a chapter. We had that a few chapters ago, but hopefully chapter six will have a good start, middle, and end to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and thanks for watching. See you soon.